Hello, welcome back. In previous videos, we have solved the Schrödinger equation for the free Gaussian wave packet, and that of a confined particle in an infinite potential well. In this video, we shall consider a quantum particle in a finite potential square well as shown. Depending on the energy of the particle, the potential well will either confine the particle, or act as just a scattering potential. We shall discuss the former in this video, and the latter in the next video. Let's begin. Since we are dealing with a time-independent potential, the particular solution to the Schrödinger equation consists of stationary states, which can be constructed from the time-independent Schrödinger equation by utilizing the method of separation of variables. If you are not familiar with this method, please refer to our previous videos in this playlist. In this video, we shall focus on obtaining the solutions to the time-independent Schrödinger equation as shown in the yellow box. Our goal is to find the set of eigenfunctions, or wave functions psi n and its corresponding eigenenergies e n. Here, the potential V defines a well for x between minus L and plus L, with a potential depth given by V0. Since we are interested in the solutions of the confined states, we focus on eigen solutions where the eigenenergies e n are less than zero. So, how should we go about solving this problem? The idea involved writing the solutions to the Schrödinger equation within and outside the well, which we should know how to do since the potential is flat in these respective regions. Then we will stitch these piecewise solutions which we will discuss later. In addition, note that the problem is symmetric with respect to x, thus, the probability, which is an observable of the problem, and given by the modulus square of the wave function, must respect this even symmetry. Thus, the wave function psi n would admit two classes of solutions, one that is even with respect to x, and one that is odd. Let's begin by first seeking the solutions outside the well. Outside the well, vx is just zero. The time-independent Schrödinger equation can be written in a slightly cleaner form, where we have defined kappa n to be square root of minus 2 m e n divide by h bar. Since e n is a negative real number, kappa n, as defined as a real positive number. The solutions to this second-order differential equation are real exponential functions as shown. The exponents can have positive or negative signs, and the signs are chosen so the solution does not blow up meaning its function has a finite integrated area. For example, when x is larger than l, the exponent should have a negative sign, so that the function decays exponentially outside the well. As we discussed earlier, the symmetry of the problem implies that psi n can be even or odd function. This is reflected by the plus-minus sign denoted in green. Next, how about inside the well? The potential in this case is simply minus v0. The time-independent Schrödinger equation can be written in a slightly cleaner form, where we have defined qn to be square root of minus 2m multiplied by en plus v0 divide by h bar. en plus v0 is a positive number, since en for confined states is a number between 0 and minus v0. Thus, qn is defined as a real positive number. The solutions to this differential equation are often written in terms of complex exponential or real cosine functions. Since we are dealing with confined states, we know they have to be standing wave solutions, thus it is appropriate to use cosines and sines. The former represents the even solution, while the latter odd. We shall solve even and odd solutions separately. Let's begin with the even solution, by first collecting our piecewise solutions within and outside the well. The constants a and b can be pinned down by imposing the so-called boundary conditions. First, we require the wave functions to be continuous at x equals to l. Second, we also require that the gradient of the wave functions to be continuous at x equals to l. One can check that imposing the same boundary conditions at x equals minus l does not add new information. Collecting the two boundary conditions, and divide one with the other, we then arrive at an equation relating the variable kappa to q. This is a so-called transcendental equation which has to be solved numerically. We shall solve this after we derive the counterpart equation for the odd solutions. Next, 
we collect our piecewise solutions within and outside the well for the odd case. Similarly, the constants A and B can be pinned down by imposing boundary conditions. Collecting the two boundary conditions, and divide one with the other, we then arrive at an equation relating the variable kappa to Q. This transcendental equation is clearly different from that for the even case. Now, we are ready to solve the eigenenergies of our confined states. Let's consider a particular case with mass equals to 0.5, a well width of 2 nanometers, and a potential well depth of 5 electron volts. We need to solve the transcendental equations as highlighted. Recall that both kappa and q depends on the eigenenergy En. We seek to find values of En where the transcendental equation will be satisfied. This can be achieved by separately plotting the function on the left and right of the equations, where the solution is given by the intersection of these curves. The left side of the transcendental equation is just kappa n, which is given by the red curve. The right side of the transcendental equation is a function of qn. For the even case, it is plotted in blue. For the odd case, it is given in green. The solutions for the eigenenergies are given by the intersections of the blue and green curves with the red, as indicated by E1, E2 and E3. We also indicate the location of the bottom of the well, located at E equals minus 5. We see that the eigenenergies are not equidistant, with larger separation in energy as the energy index increases. This is consistent with what we expect in the infinite well case. How does our result compares with the infinite well case? We indicate with dashed lines the eigenenergies for the infinite well. We see that the eigenenergy for the finite well case is always smaller than the infinite well counterpart. This is not surprising since the quantum confinement effect is strongest when the potential well is infinitely deep. Finally, we show here the wave functions for the eigensolutions with the two lowest energies. The lowest energy level, or the ground state, is an even wave function, and the next energy level is an odd wave function. The two dashed lines indicate the locations of the well. We clearly see that the wave function penetrates outside the well, a quantum phenomenon known as the wave function penetration. It decays exponentially outside the well, and we see that the penetration is deeper for the states with higher energy. In the next video, we shall discuss states with energies above the potential well, known as scattering states. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.